Good morning, Union Baptist Church family. God bless you. It's so good to see you this morning. Good morning and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Wilkes from Elon First Baptist Church. We welcome you to Union Baptist Church Virtual Sanctuary. And my name is Dr. Kia Hood Scott, site pastor of the Union Baptist Church, Jamestown High Point. And we welcome you to this amazing occasion on this morning. Come on, won't you join us with our, Af our call to worship this morning? Lift up your holy hands and repeat after me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, where our feet shall dwell within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Come on, right where you are, in your living room, in your dining room, give God your very best praise, your very best worship, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, won't you just tap someone around you and just say, it's good to be in worship. We may not be in a physical space, but we are in a virtual space giving God praise today for our bishop, our pastor, our overseer, as we celebrate 30 years of pastoring and ministering to the kingdom of God. Come on, Pastor Woods, can you help us with this this morning? Would you do me a favor, write in the comment section, can you thank God for our wonderful pastor, overseer, and bishop, his grace, the right reverend Dr. Sir Walter Lee Mack II. Can we thank God for him today yes, for 30 years of yes, ministerial uh, preaching and teaching, being with people in their roughest times, being at the hospital, caring for people. Union Baptist, let me tell you something, that we are blessed with one of the best pastors in the world, right here yes. in the beautiful city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And so today we celebrate him for everything that he has done, not only for being a pastor and a teacher, but being a father to some of those children who needed a father, for being a counselor in times of need, for being a chaplain when you were yes. in the hospital for being someone that you could just pick up the phone and say I need a good laugh we celebrate you today and Bishop we say thank you thank you thank you for 30 years of what you have done for us and we believe that the best is still yet to come come on do me a favor right in that comment section thank God for our Bishop congratulate him right now and say we celebrate you Bishop Sir Walter Mack thank you again Dr. Hood why is this day very important for us thank you so much Pastor Wilkes, this day is important because with everything that's happening in our nation, we know that our nation is in a, in a different place. But what we do know, we celebrate our, our bishop today because even in the midst of everything being chaotic, he was still doing the work. He did not stop doing kingdom work because he understands that the mandate is larger than the building. And so we celebrate the man of God today. We celebrate Wilkes, our spiritual father that has helped shape us. And many of you out there, we got many um, spiritual sons and daughters out there. We celebrate our pastor, the shepherd that smells like the sheep. We celebrate him today for his work and his contribution to the the kingdom of God and what better way to do that than just to make sure that we tell him thank you and you do that today put your comments down there just tell him how much you appreciate him because this is a joyous occasion to celebrate a man of God who has not stopped doing the work and with that y'all we want to continue this celebration Pastor Wills, we got a great lineup today we got don't a we? great lineup we got an amazing lineup to help celebrate our bishop and also don't forget our main reason is also to exalt the name of God come on can you exalt him right where you are give God praise right where you are and I think we got some dancers that's gonna help we us do that we got some dancers listen Union Baptist is known for being one of the most creative and innovative churches in the country. Well, before any church really had a dance ministry, it was a vision of Bishop Sir Walter Mack to put one in place. And so today, we are blessed to have our dance ministry that's going to bless us as we bless God. Come on, let's get ready. I can't wait. And put your shouting shoes on. Come on, because the blood still works. shed over 2,000 years ago, but it's still saving right now. It's still healing right now. Come on, praise him, because the blood still works.
where you are. Come on, you ought to bless the Lord right where you are. Because the blood still works. Come on, do you believe the blood still works? Come on, tell your feet to believe. Come on, tell your hands to believe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The blood still works. Come on, look, we're having a good time in this virtual worship. Oh, it's good. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Oh, it's good. And it's moving in this place. Listen, yes, listen. Sir. Don't go anywhere. Listen, we are so blessed that we have some notable voices that are national, locally, that's going to come to give some greetings today. And not just give greetings for you just to listen, but a word to help encourage you today. So listen, we are so grateful for these voices that are coming to give greetings, to celebrate our bishop, and to encourage you on this special day. So, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters, let us now receive some special guests that will come to help us and lead us further in our worship. Hello everyone, I'm Alan Joins, the mayor of the city of Winston-Salem, and it's my pleasure and honor to be a part of bringing you greetings as we stop to celebrate the life and contributions of Bishop Sir Walter Mack. The bishop has served his God, and he served this community in so many, many ways. I personally can attest to the work that he's done here in this community. For instance, he put together an amazing coalition of African American leaders, white leaders, and others to bring to the city a request, a demand, if you will, that the name of the Dixie Classic Fair be changed because of the offensive nature of that. This is just an example of how Dr. Mack has works behind the scenes and sometimes in front of the, the scenes to make things happen in our community. I'm proud to call him my friend, my mentor, and my advisor. He has helped me through many situations and gave, given me great advice for our community. So on behalf of our city, our 250,000 citizens, it's my pleasure to say congratulations, Dr. Mack. Thank you for what you mean to our community, and may I wish you many, many more years of service to God and to our community. Thank you. I greet you with the joy of the Lord, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to say a word of affirmation and appreciation to my good friend, Bishop Sir Walter Lee Mack, Jr. There are several words that come to mind, generosity, loving, and caring, but I just want to spend a, about 30 seconds talking about innovation, because uh, Bishop Mack is one of the most creative persons I know. Sometimes we do not understand the depth of genius of persons who are close to us. Union Baptists, people of Winston-Salem, you have within your midst one who truly understands the word of God that says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Already it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? You have in your midst one who understands and who uh, embodies the word of revelation found in toward the end when it says that God says, I make a new heaven and a new earth. Behold, I make all things new. Pastor Walter Lee Mack, thank you for bringing newness into all of our lives in terms of how we read the scripture, in terms of how we practice ministry, in terms of how we live our lives. 
and in terms of how we uh, express our love to people just like you. God be with you. My precious brother, Bishop Sir Walter Mack, and Lady Kim, what a joy it is for me to greet you on this, the celebration of your 30th pastoral anniversary. You are a prince in the Lord's church. You are a shepherd beyond compare. 30 years is a long time to preach and teach and lead God's people. 30 years is a long time to baptize believers and bless babies, to eulogize members and others. 30 years is a long time to administer the affairs of the congregation and to represent God in the world. But you have done it, sir, with grace and dignity, with authority and with love. And so as your church celebrates you, I celebrate you, my friends. I am so grateful to be a part of your life and have you in mind. I love you. God bless you. It is my honor to congratulate my beloved brother, Bishop Reverend Dr. Sir Walter Mack on this his 30th pastoral anniversary. I know of no other pastor anywhere whose wit and wisdom, whose passion and whose prophetic power matches that of Sir Walter Mack. I'm honored to be his friend. I'm inspired by his leadership. And I thank God that we have crossed paths. We have shared ministry and we have formed a great personal relationship. Thank you to the church and to the community for allowing me to participate. God bless you, and I pray that everything good that can happen will happen in honor of this year 30th year. God bless you. To Bishop Sir Walter Mike, greetings in the name of Christ our King. All the way from the Potter's House in Dallas, Texas, I send greetings and love and appreciation and acknowledgement of 30 years of faithful service to the Master. I've enjoyed our interactions, our times of fellowship, our brief interactions and communications we've had one with another at critical moments and times along the way. And I am proud and honored to lift my voice to appreciate and celebrate 30 years in ministry. Continue to do what you do. Nobody can do what you do like you do it. May God smile upon you. May he bless you. May he give you fresh word and fresh manna and new books and new revelation and continue to feed the body of Christ because we are all blessed because of the 30 years you have given to our Lord and Savior. God bless you from the Potter's House. And again, happy anniversary. Our pastor comes from a long line of gospel preachers. In fact, his grandfather pastored a church that we could walk to from right here about two streets over many, many years ago. One of the main gospel preachers that they featured at that time was Reverend Sir Walter Mack who was known at that time as a boy preacher because he was so young. And when he would preach on Sunday evening, they would just fill up the little storefront church. And he was so small because he was so young, he couldn't stand, you couldn't see him over the podium. And what they would do, they would take a soda pop crate and lay it down in front of the podium and he would stand up on it, and he would preach the gospel.
I'm Uter Evans. Happy 30th anniversary to my friend, my former employee, Dr. Sir Walter Mack Jr., who I met at the age of 19 while he was a student at Elon University. He applied for a part-time job on Sundays that worked from 6 a.m. to noon, in which he played good gospel music, hosted local personalities with live shows, and played pre-recorded programmings like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Speaks and local churches who we aired at 11 o'clock. He was prompt, he was dependable, and he had great personality. So where he went from that point on was not a surprise to me because he demonstrated early on that he was dependable. He was a joy then and he continues to be one now after 30 years. Congratulations. I'm especially delighted to have been asked to make remarks on this Bishop Max anniversary. Um, my mind goes back to many years ago um, when he called me and said that he wanted to talk to me and we went out to a restaurant and sat down and he made the announcement that he felt like he was inspired uh, to preach, wanted to preach. He um, preaches not because he wants to say something, but Bishop Mack has something to say. And we thank God for him and um, just really thank God that I've been able to play a role in his life, his ministry, and his work. My name is Frances Troxler, and I want to share some information on Dr. Mack and his father, Reverend Mack, to share with you some of the similarities between these two preachers. Now, first of all, Reverend Mack was my pastor at the age of 14 at Bunker Baptist Church, a little church in Davidson County. Reverend Mack came, Miss Frances Mack, his wife, and all the little Mackey children. They were all at Buncombe Baptist Church. And I noticed even after joining Union that Reverend Max's preaching style, Dr. Max's preaching style, Reverend Max's pastoral leadership style, Reverend Max's pastoral leadership style, his preaching style and so many other things were so similar. Bishop Mack, our pastor now, he has that love for the children. He's always looking out for his babies, which is what his father used to call the children at Buncombe. Bishop Mack always had a plan, always has a plan for Union Baptist Church. He is so creative, always thinking of a way to build up the church. Our bishop has even brought in TV celebrities, well-known house household name celebrities. We've had uh, professional, uh, gospel artists to come in. So look at the similarities there. Dr. Mack and his dad, Reverend Mack, that pastoral leadership must run in the blood because I see it here every time I'm at Union Baptist Church, that similarity in Dr. and Bishop Mack. Hello, I'm Kent Millard, president at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. And I am delighted to have the opportunity of congratulating Bishop Sir Walter Mack for his highly effective, fruitful, and faithful leadership of Union Baptist Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for the past 30 years. Good morning. My name is Dr. Harold Hudson. I'm the Associate Dean of Doctoral Studies at United Theological Seminary. And during the years that Bishop Mack has been here as a mentor, it has been a privilege not only for myself, but for the entire staff and all of the students that have graduated under him. Um, I probably the most funniest story that I've ever had with Bishop Mack. I've had several, but I only have just a few seconds here. Um, it's probably when we were in Alaska. Bishop was doing a revival in Alaska, and I never forget that morning. Bishop called down to my room and he said, hey man, uh, did you get that message from Daryl Napa? I said, what message? He said, man, Napa said, 
it was a hurricane in Hawaii and they looking for a tsunami here in Alaska. I said, man, you lying. Let me go back to sleep. He said, no, man, for real, turn on CNN. Sure enough, I turned on CNN. There was a hurricane in Hawaii causing a tsunami in Alaska. So I stayed in my room for a few moments and I started thinking about that thing. So the next thing I did, next thing I know, I went down to Bishop Mack's room and I knocked on the door. He said, who is it? I said, it's me. He said, boy, what you doing down here? I said, man, I ain't gonna die down there by myself. <laughs> if a tsunami gonna come, I didn't come out here by myself and I ain't gonna die down there by myself. And uh, he said, boy, something's wrong with you, man. <laughs> If I had to name a funny story uh, concerning Bishop Mack, it would probably be a time when uh, several of us preachers were eating lunch with him and some started beginning to talk about their seminary experience and, and I began to share that I, I never finished my undergrad and I like to go back to school but I had gotten too old and, and I was making all kinds of excuses why uh, I really couldn't uh, go back to school. And I think he got tired of hearing me complain and he finally looked at me and says, what else you got to do the next four years? <laughs> Eventually, I did go back, finish my undergrad and my master's and, and now I'm in my doctoral program. All because he looked at me and said, what else you got to do the next four years? <laughs> One of the stories that I remember with uh, uh, Dr. Mack and I was um, one um, fall that we were in uh, Ohio uh, at the um, uh, doctoral program uh, at United Theological Seminary and I think we were, we were going out to eat um, uh, and, and, and driving uh, to that restaurant and um, I was driving and he was on the phone and, and I was wondering who is this that he is showing this strong affection for because every other word it was hey baby and uh, baby, you know, uh, yes, I, I, I'm going to do that. And of course, of course, baby, and I love you. And I, and I said, wow, who is he pouring his love on? And, um, and this is what I love so much about you, Mac, is that it was his mother. And, um, and, and I feel the same way about my mom. And, um, and, and I so admire that about you, about how you really circle and pull your arms around your family and your mom. Um, love that so much. The funniest story I have of Bishop Sir Walter Mack and I was when I was an intern here graduating from the University of North Carolina Greensboro in 2015. He told me that I should really consider going to Divinity School, rather he told me I was going. I said, well I've applied to Wake Forest and I applied to Duke and I've gotten into both of them. He said, I went to Duke but I don't want you to go there, I want you to go to Wake Forest where well, you'd be closer to me. I said, okay I'll go to Wake. My first year, I was looking to see what classes I should take and I decided to take Hebrew after consulting him. He says, take Hebrew, boy. It'll help you out. You'll learn and I'll be able to help you. I said, okay. My first week in Hebrew, I was struggling. I called him on the phone. I said, Bishop, I'm struggling with Hebrew and I need help. He said, oh boy, I can't help you with Hebrew. I took Greek. <laughs> Bishop Sir Walter Lee Mack Jr. can be identified as a faith essential worker right here in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County. Bishop Mack is an essential worker because of his dedication and his work efforts towards bringing social justice in our communities here locally in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, North Carolina. And so I say to you, Bishop Sir Walter Lee Mack Jr., Happy 30th ministerial anniversary. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. And thank you for progress towards social justice in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, North Carolina. My name is Peter Barnes. I'm the senior pastor at the First Presbyterian Church here in Winston-Salem. It is a privilege and an honor to take part in this celebration of the 30th anniversary of Bishop Sir Walter Mack's ordination. A second thing is that I've noticed he is such a bridge builder and he is one who has been uh, such a delight to work with in trying to tear down the walls that separate us and build bridges of understanding within our community. And I've appreciated the ways in which he has leaned into some of the conversations we've been having in this city. 
He was uh, the lead pastor of six black pastors who led a cohort of 40 white pastors this past summer in learning more about uh, the black experience in Winston-Salem and what's it like for African Americans in our community and, and how can we lean into the issues of racial injustice and pursue reconciliation in a more biblical way. He has always got a heart for reaching across the aisle, building a bridge where there's been a chasm. And he's a pioneer and he's an agent of change. And when it came time to bring to to bear the issue of the name of the Dixie Classic Fair, he was the man who led the charge. And we all knew it was time for a change. And I remember when we were in the, uh, in the, the auditorium where we made a presentation or various hearings were, were had in that auditorium with the city council. After he gave his fiery speech, there was cheering in that auditorium. You could have passed an offering plate and taken up a collection. There was such enthusiasm for it but he is a pioneer and an agent of change. We are the siblings of Bishop Mack and so happy to represent our mother and the entire family as we celebrate these 30 years in ministry. I wanna let you know a little bit about his commitment to family. He has been our covering, he prays for us, there's not a day that does not go by that he doesn't check on my mom or come by and spend some time with her. There, he's as, as busy as he is, he always takes time for each of us. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Bishop Mack and the ministry. Here at Union Baptist Church, we enjoy and we look forward to sitting around the table, what we call the situation room, and just loving to hear what Dr. Mack has to bring with all of his creativity to the table. And I would like to add, as his brother, and these are my sisters, we're excited about the next future that God has in store for all of us being ministered to. He's a tremendous innovative personality, scholarly trained and educated, and loves to empower us all. So we thank you in allowing us to celebrate with you Bishop Mack II's 30th year and anniversary in ministry, and may God bless us to have many, many more. Yes. Bishop Mack, on behalf of the Kingdom Operations Staff and the Kingdom Ministry Teams, we want to congratulate you on 30 years of service. We thank you for your life-changing work that you do in the Kingdom of God. We thank you that you are so obedient to hear from God and carry out his work that he has for you, his purpose, plan, and will for your life. We thank you that you have been a, on the cutting edge in your leadership, and we're so inspired from your leadership. And we love you. Isaiah 48 says, grass withers and flowers fade but the Word of God will stand forever. Bishop Mack, I have watched you preach, teach, and live this Word of God for 30 years. You embody the true essence of a preacher, a pastor, and a man of God. Your integrity, passion, leadership, scholarship is beyond measure. And you also inspire, encourage, and uplift so many others. So today, I celebrate you as my pastor and my husband. Bishop Mack, you are one of a kind. I am grateful to God for you and so excited for your 30th anniversary. I'm here to support you, encourage you, and love you as you continue to love, inspire, and encourage the people of God. Happy anniversary, Bishop Mack. I love you, sweetie. Thank you for the ministry of Walter Mack, and I pray God that whatever his needs are, whatever the needs of this ministry are, they are met now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he rule, may he ever abide with all of you now and forever. And everybody set together out in virtual space, thank God, and amen.
Well, we thank all of those notable speakers for every nice and wonderful thing that you said about our bishop and our future. We're so grateful for you. We want to recognize the fragrance of Union Baptist and the person and personality of Lady Kim Bush Mack. We thank you so much for all you have done, and you'll hear from her a little bit later on. Right before we go into our offering, I want to ask Dr. Kia Hood Scott, my sister, a question. What's your favorite story with Bishop Mack? Oh my gosh, Wilkes, I got, Pastor Wilkes, I got so many. But one that I can remember very briefly, when I started seminary at Wake Forest, I came in, I was so distraught because it was a very different experience for me. I was in the bishop's office, I was crying. And he looked at me and he said, now, are you finished? This is what you got to do. And even though I was like, wow, that, that, he, I think he cared. But I know he cared. But he also knew what my finished product would be. He wouldn't let me stay in that space, but allow me to transcend to where I needed to be. So I thank God for that. Those are, and many of us have to kind of, all those kind of stories. What about you, Pastor Wills? What you got? Well, mine is more recent. Uh, when my father died, I probably heard from Bishop Mack about 50 times a day. I didn't tell him um, what time I was going to view my father's body the first time at the funeral home. And I walked in, and there with a mask on and a full suit, shirt, and tie stood Bishop Sir Walter Mack. And he said to me, I wouldn't let you go through this alone. Yeah. And that, for me, was so much encouragement to know that in the moment that I did feel all alone, that I wasn't alone, that he was with me. And I'm so thankful for him. And that leads me into offering time. Yeah. Um, you know, the Bible says that we are to sow into our pastors. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that if any year that we should give to them, it ought to be this year. I'm a pastor myself, Dr. Hood. I want you to know that preaching to an empty sanctuary every week is mentally exhausting. Yeah. It feels as though you've probably preached 10 sermons in one day. And I want you to know that you've been blessed. We've been blessed. Yes, we have. To have such a pastor who has studied, prepared, and pours out every week to make sure that you are blessed with the Word of God. Yes. And so I want you to be a favor. If you've been blessed this year, you've not lost anything, and you can, why don't you consider sowing into the man of God? My wife and I are going to sow. Dr. Kia Hood Scott and her husband are going to sow. We want to make sure that we bless the man of God. His cash app is below. Funny story, he didn't know what cash app was until we were riding somewhere. <laughs> and I finally told him, Reverend, you got cash app? What is that? And now he has cash app, and I'm so grateful. His cash app is dollar sign, so Walter Mack is right there on the screen. You can see it. And also, if you want to be a blessing to the Union Baptist Church, you can do that too. Yes. And I want you to know that we've been blessed. Do me a favor, put that seed in your right hand at home we give god what's right not what's left let's pray god we thank you today for this seed we believe god that as we give this seed and we put it in good ground that you will do the watering and you will cause us to have the increase thank you now as we bless this man of god that you will bless us it's in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. All right, well, Dr. Kia Hood Scott, after three years, I still have to get used to Dr. Kia Hood Scott. I'm going to put it back in your hands. Thank you so much, Pastor Wilson. Listen, we thank you for your giving, and we thank you for what you do to support the kingdom work here at Union Baptist Church. Listen, we want you to invite you to join us today at 1 o'clock because the celebration will continue as we have our drive-through celebration for our bishop and first lady. Listen, you can bring your gifts then. You can bring your cards and just show our bishop and first lady how much you appreciate them so we invite you to come back and join us today at one o'clock p.m come on pastor Wills, lead us further and listen don't forget don't log out after preaching there is some more singing more dancing more remarks this is a virtual anniversary experience yes, yes, and yes. we want to give that to you but we want to make sure that we celebrate our bishop well listen we're getting ready to be blessed with the word of god i want you to know that we're getting ready to, to bring up our bishop and if we were in worship today physically i would tell you let's all stand as we receive our bishop today so if you're in your home would you if you're able would you stand if you can't just wave your hand let's receive the most honorable pastor of the union baptist church he is none other than the reverend dr sir walter lee mack jr come on let's thank god for our bishop today let's all stand as we receive him 
come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Oh my God, what a celebration. And I am so grateful and so thankful for what God has done. It has not been easy, but it has been a blessing. And for 30 years, God has kept me and God has tremendously blessed me with so many of you in my life. And I am really blessed because of that. And I want to thank God for the Reverend Dr. Keir Hood Scott and um, the Reverend James Wilkes, soon to be Dr. James Wilkes. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for both of them for leading us. And uh, this has been a tremendous celebration already. I have been so amazed and surprised. I just did know that they had all of this put together and uh, I've just been enjoying it so far and I understand that there is much more to come uh, many more greetings to come and and so for those of you who are watching with us please share this message invite someone to join with you as we celebrate together uh, we're not just celebrating uh, my life we're celebrating our lives together our ministry together for 30 years, God has been um, blessing us. Let me also just share with you that coming up this evening at six o'clock p.m. will be part two, part two. Um, I'm going to be taking a moment to share with you some of the ups and downs of my ministry over the course of 30 years. You're going to hear some inside stories. Uh, with with um, Pastor Deborah Terry Stevens, and she's interviewing me, and you're going to be able to hear that, along with some other greetings and music and dance and arts, and so it's just going to be awesome at six o'clock p.m. today. We want you to join us for that. I want you to know that God is blessing us, and God is keeping us, and this is the season that you must position yourself for God to do greater in your life. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we are getting ready for the preaching of the gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, and we have a preacher that's coming forward. Listen, I am so blessed to have one in my life who has walked with me for many, many, many years. Uh, this man that's coming to preach to us today, um, he knew my father. And uh, he knew my father and he was blessed by my father and my father was blessed by his preaching. And I am so thankful to have him. He has been watching me down through the years. And so I was so thankful to be able to just get him to come and share with us today. We're so happy to have the apostolic voice and the prophetic voice of Bishop A.L. Genright. He will be with us today. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise for Bishop Genright of the Gap Church right there in Charlotte, North Carolina. You don't want to miss him. And I want you to just tap your friend or, or call someone, text someone, email them, do whatever you have to do and tell them that Bishop Genright will be up in just a few minutes. But before we hear from that anointed bishop and we thank God for him and his ministry. We will hear song selection from one of my dear friends. We serve in the Global United Fellowship together under the leadership of, of our presiding prelate, Bishop Neil C. Ellis. And we serve together in Global United Fellowship and we're so thankful to have Bishop Cortez Vaughn. He's a Grammy Award winner and you know him, you've heard him on many of occasions, and we're just so thankful that he's gonna come and set the atmosphere for Bishop Genright to be a blessing to you on today. I am so thankful to have this opportunity to present both of them as they will take us further into our celebration. After they minister, we don't want you to go anywhere. We want you to stay around and hear more greetings. I'm waiting to hear them. I don't even know who all they have. 
but I want to hear more greetings and more celebrations, and we're going to be together. Don't forget, I want to see some of you at 1 o'clock, at 1 o'clock down at Union Baptist Church. I want to see your face. Listen, I just, I just can't wait to see your face. Some of you I have not seen in three or four months. I cannot wait to see your face. And then at 6 o'clock p.m., we will be back on right here on this Facebook page and other networks. We'll be right on um, watching part two of our celebration. God bless you, and let's get ready to hear Bishop Cortez Vaughn and following him, Bishop A.L. Wright. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise again. God bless you, and I'll see you later. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him oh, oh how sweet. Hallelujah. To trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath an healing, cleansing flood. So Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Just from sin. And so to cease Just from Jesus Simply taking Life and rest And joy and peace Jesus, Jesus How I trust him Hallelujah How I proved him Oh and all oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust in more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior and friend, and I know that thou art with me will be with me until the end Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and oh Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more oh for grace yes God to trust him more oh for grace hallelujah to trust him more and because God is the greatest power 
we shall never, never be defeated. <laughs> and because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And it's all for grace. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, for grace. Yeah. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Lord, we trust you. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our eyes are set on you, Lord, and we trust you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let's pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We honor you this day, and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, as I pray, we ask now that you would forgive us of our sins and blot out every one of our transgressions, create in us a clean heart, renew within us a right spirit, order our steps in your word, lead, guide, and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful occasion, and we pray your blessings upon your man of God. Bless his family. Bless this church family. I ask even now, Lord, that your glory will be revealed in this place. Now use me for your glory. I pray that no flesh be on parade, but Jesus, you be exalted. We bind everything that is not of you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you, and the blood of Jesus is against you. We decree and we declare victory now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I am just so grateful and thankful unto the Lord for this opportunity to share with my brother and friend, Bishop Sir Walter Mack, his lovely wife and family, and the members of the Union Baptist Church. It is such an humbled honor to be here and to celebrate this wonderful man of God, his anniversary in ministry, and even serving this church for 21 years. How blessed we are to be a part of such an auspicious occasion. I want to lift a word now from 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. 2 Timothy Chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, here in the reading of the word. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 6 again, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. I, I want to preach today with your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about after 30 years, now what? That's what I want to talk about. After 30 years, now what? Again, I count it a privilege and honor to be here to share with my dear friend and brother, Bishop Sir Walter Mack, in celebrating three decades of exemplary ministry for the kingdom of God. 30 years of ministry is no small feat and certainly no tiptoe through the tulips. 
especially when dealing with some of us church folk. Yet this valiant man of God has triumphantly transversed this journey here at Union Baptist Church and within the Winston-Salem metro area. Uh, that's worth giving God honor and praise. And as a matter of fact, we just ought to pause long enough to give an ovation for this man of God who is doing a great work. I have witnessed personally for myself the hand of God that has been over this man's life. From taking up the legacy and vision of his late father, Reverend Dr. Sir Walter Mack Sr. to moving a traditional church into operating under the apostolic kingdom mandate of the Holy Spirit. Uh, his yielding to the Spirit is what moved me some years ago to appoint him on the board of advisors uh, when birthing the Pastors Consortium International. As a matter of fact, uh, Union Baptist Church was our host church for our very first consortium regional conference. I saw then firsthand this man's ardent passion for excellence in ministry and kingdom expansion. And since then, uh, his capacity for building cutting edge ministry is undeniable. The proof is right here, all around us and throughout this entire city. You cannot go nowhere in this city uh, without knowing of the work of uh, Bishop Sir Walter Mack and the Union Baptist Church. His innovative methods and instruction for evangelism and outreach within the modern this modern culture is something I am even gleaning from uh, now this man uh, put together a drug dealers conference where they are galvanized in order to obtain a better knowledge of Jesus our society and their own selves. Now, that's something phenomenal. Not to mention utilizing uh, the gospel ice cream truck in the community and formulating programs and activities to bridge the generation gap between our seasoned saints and young adults and addressing social issues within the community by using sports and athletics as an outreach medium. Uh, these things are only a small portion of the great accomplishments Bishop Sir Walter Mack has been blessed to fulfill. Yes, 30 years in ministry is definitely worth making some fuss over. Think about it, if you will. Uh, so much has changed within 30 years. Uh, we now have smartphone devices and even smart televisions. In fact, those old floor model televisions have been replaced by wide flat screen HD TVs. Uh, we, we now have hybrid and electric vehicles. Uh, there's even cars that drive and park themselves. And now we can operate an entire house and turn on appliances uh, by merely talking to them. And social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok has taken over as the platform for this culture. Uh, even 
church culture has changed in 30 years. Uh, hymns are really sung now in our churches. Uh, service times have been modified to fit people's busy schedules. Uh, now folk don't even have to show up at church. They can watch from their uh, devices anywhere uh, that they are by way of uh, streaming. Uh, good old devotional service has uh, been somewhat replaced by praise and worship. Uh, choirs have been replaced by praise teams or singers uh, or even uh, guest psalmists. Uh, church bands and musicians are being replaced by an app that gives the full worship experience at the touch of a button. And no need to, for collection pans now uh, because we have mobile uh, giving on our devices. Yet, what do we say to all of these many changes? Uh, what do we say to these accomplishments, challenges, and victories? After all of this, what could be next? After 30 years, where do we go from here, Bishop Mack? What is the next move I ask for you and the Union Baptist Church? Well, let's, let's take a look now at this text as we peruse this word. Timothy, a faithful spiritual son of Paul's and a young pastor who had been leading the church at Ephesus for four years, receives a letter of encouragement from Paul in the face of difficulties and trials. At this particular time, Timothy, uh, it is said, was experiencing great opposition to his message and to himself as a leader. His youth, his association with Paul and his leadership had come under fire from believers and non-believers alike. Uh, this sounds all too familiar to us uh, who have passed over these roads before. Uh, listen now, uh, in the midst of Timothy's despair, uh, listen to what Paul says to him uh, while this young man is struggling. Uh, now, he does not tell him to retaliate. Uh, he does not tell him to call a church meeting and get those folks straight. He does not tell him to throw up his hands and resign. Rather, he tells him to stir up the gift of God that is within you. That's all he says. Stir up what's already within you. You see, when Timothy was ordained, he received special gifts uh, from God. And Paul reminds him of these gifts of the Spirit, which came when the elders of the church uh, laid their hands on him. Uh, these gifts were given not for Timothy to elevate himself, uh, but rather to glorify God and edify the church. In telling him to stir up these gifts, Paul was encouraging Timothy to take his focus off his challenges and persevere. Uh, he was telling him, stop being enameled by what's going on and keep your eyes on the prize. You've got to persist, Timothy. you got to press on. You've got to go for it and stick with it. 
Now, nobody said that being a leader would be easy, simple, or problem-free. Uh, nobody said that being a minister of the gospel would be without difficulty. Who told you that sharing the word of God would be painless, effortless, uncomplicated, and undemanding? This is why it is so important to heed the words of Paul and stir up the gift of God and it is from this second letter to Timothy uh, from Paul do I take spiritual liberty today to encourage my friend and brother Bishop Sir Walter Mack as he begins this next phase of ministry I want to tell Bishop Mack to stir up the gift of God that resides on the inside of you for when you stir up the gift it will first of all give you power to act courageously I said when you stir up the gift Mac it will give you power to act courageously Paul urged Timothy to be bold, to be daring, uh, to be heroic, fearless, and courageous. Oh, brothers and sisters, the church does not need weak leadership, but rather the church needs men and women uh, who will take a bold, courageous stand for God. Uh, yeah, the church needs leaders uh, who uh, will be all in for and with God. Now, that does not come without a price. Uh, when we allow people to intimidate us, uh, we neutralize our effect for God when we allow people to manipulate us and to play us we then lower our gods and hinder the Lord from doing what he really wants to do within the body of Christ God does not need any scary weak leaders the power of the Holy Spirit can help us overcome our fears of what others might say do or think so that we can continue to do God's work the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in us because the Holy Spirit is the empowering agent of God and lives on the inside of us. Uh, we don't need other gifts. Uh, we don't need other contraptions. Uh, God has already deposited within us all that we need. Uh, that's why the word says in 2 Peter 1 and 3, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. All we need, I tell you, is to stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. Stir it up in the midst of fear and intimidation. Stir up the gift. Stop trying to operate in your own power. Stop trying to do with your limited knowledge. Stop trying to manipulate the situation and stir up the gift uh, that's on the inside of you uh, for God has not given us a spirit of fear oh no uh, but of power and of love and that of a sound mind uh, we've got 
to be courageous now uh, in the midst of uh, a world uh, and a people uh, who uh, is doing everything in their power to discredit leaders and to discredit the church. Uh, but God uh, need a bold, courageous leader uh, who will stand boldly and unapologetically and declare the word of the Lord. Secondly, when you stir up the gift, it will give you passion to act confidently I said it will give you passion to act confidently Paul shared with Timothy the importance of love love helps us to become passionate about what we do and being passionate helps us to become confident in our abilities and not distracted uh, uh, by other things. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bernard uh, Richardson of the Howard Divinity School shared a powerful truth for those engaged in ministry. Uh, he said, and I quote, uh, we must be careful to guard our hearts because it will determine the future of our lives. Uh, uh, People may question your decisions, but never let them question your heart. And when love ceases, your ministry will cease. When love ceases, your passion for ministry will cease. Uh, who better uh, uh, than Paul could talk about people that tugged at his heartstring? Uh, Peter and some of the apostles opposed him. Uh, John Mark disappointed him. Uh, Herod Agrippa II rejected him. Felix ignored him. Festus avoided him. Oh, Alexander the coppersmith did him evil. Demas forsook him uh, for the present world. And Nero uh, was seeking to execute him. Wouldn't all of this aggravate you? Wouldn't this unnerve you? Wouldn't this demoralize you? Wouldn't this decombocculate you and distract you and even weaken you if you had to deal with all of these distractions? Not without, but distractions from within. This is why we need to love our way through. If not, we will lose our confidence and not have what we need to be effective in our ministry. Uh, you got to love your way through. And when loving your way through, uh, yes, it will cause you uh, to look beyond folks idiosyncrasies. When you love your way through, it calls you to look beyond folks foolishness and their crazy talk and actions. When you love your way through, you will pray for those who despitefully use you and those who try to destroy what God has called you to do. Yes, when you stir up the gift that's within you, it will give you the passion to act confidently. And finally, when you stir up the gift, it will not only give you power to act courageously and passion to act confidently, uh, but it will give you, listen now, perception to act carefully. I said it will give you perception to act carefully. Paul shared with Timothy this final gift that needs to be stirred and that is wisdom which comes from a sound mind. Uh, wisdom sharpens and shapes our perception. Perception is how we 
see things is how we view things and how we view things have a lot to do with how we handle things are you hearing me in ministry uh, we have to be careful now uh, in everything that we do uh, because I don't care how uh, you try uh, not to be seen folk are still watching you and you've got to be careful that your goods are not evil spoken of Paul was encouraging Timothy uh, to carefully think through everything he would do and let himself be guided by the word of God uh, you see when your mind is guarded by the word of God uh, you will think differently uh, when you are guarded by the word of God uh, you don't say everything that pops in your head when your mind is guarded by the word of God it will safeguard your emotions it defends your mind from demonic assault and it shields you from arrows of the enemy may try to shoot in your direction to arouse a spirit of fear on the inside of you the devil is still cunning and he still is a deceiver of the brothering when you begin to live a life of faith when you reach out to do the impossible like bishop Ma, like bishop mac the enemy will try to assault you uh, he'll come after you mentally and emotionally in an effort to stop your progress uh, the enemy will tell you uh, you can't do this and you can't do that uh, this is why Paul said to the church at Philippi let this mind be in you uh, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God uh, for you see brothers and sisters a mind that is filled with the word of God is a mind that is ready to do a good work uh, yeah a mind that is filled with a word of God is ready now uh, yes to move uh, yeah mountains up of your way by faith uh, this was all that Paul was trying to tell Timothy keep your mind son stayed on Jesus and he will lead you and guide you along keep your mind Timothy stayed on the Lord uh, the devil is trying to get a rise out of you the enemy is trying to sidetrack you he's trying to derail your progress uh, yeah he's trying to get you to pop off and say something uh, uh, that will mar your witness uh, but you keep your mind on Jesus uh, because just like you got in this trouble for the Lord uh, it is the Lord who is going to get you out uh, this was what Paul was trying to get him to understand and all through the scripture men and women of God uh, found the Lord through their ministry stirring up something uh, within uh, them uh, yes indeed uh, but the greatest stirring up uh, that we uh, have ever witnessed was when God the Father stirred up Jesus the Son uh, of God through the Holy Spirit that empowering agent of the Trinity all that was in Jesus was stirred up for the ministry that he was called to do when Satan tried to tempt him in the wilderness 
something uh, was stirred up in Jesus causing uh, him uh, yes uh, to uh, say get thee behind me Satan uh, on his way uh, to uh, see about the daughter of Jairus something was stirred up in Jesus so much so uh, that when a woman suffering with an issue of blood reached out in the crowd and touched the hem of his garment uh, some virtue went out of Jesus and healed that woman on the spot when Jesus approached the temple and saw what was going on men buying and selling and making the house of God a den of thieves something stirred up within him and he drove them out of his father's house but then they took him in the garden of Gethsemane bound him with fetters tried him in a kangaroo court and led him to Golgotha's hill where he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed there on Calvary he suffered bled and died for your sin and for my sin and for the sin of the whole world of the out on Calvary, uh, Jesus hung, bled, and died. Uh, I said he died on Calvary. Uh, they took him down and buried him in a borrowed grave. He laid in that grave all night, uh, Friday night, and all day Saturday. Uh, but early in the Sunday, Sunday morning, there was a stirring in the tomb. And from the bowels of the earth, Jesus rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth. In his hands, he went forth in the conquering spirit, leading captivity captive and giving gifts to men and women. Well, now Jesus. He is very much alive and he's still in control. Well, after 30 years of ministry and 21 years serving as pastor of the Union Baptist Church, Bishop Mac, now what? Well, I just want to recommend that you stir up the gift that's with in you stir up the gift of wisdom for it will lead you to the virtue of charity stir up the gift of understanding for it will lead you to the virtue of faith stir up the gift of fortitude for it will lead you to the virtue of courage stir up the gift of knowledge for it will lead you to the virtue of strength stir up the gift of piety for it will lead you to hope stir up the gift of love peace joy patience kindness goodness stir up Mac faithfulness gentleness and self-control after 30 years now what well I 
want to recommend while you stirring up the gift take the limits off of God I said take the limits off of God you have not seen your best year yet for the best is yet to come I have not seen you have not heard the great thing that God is going to do in your life at the 30 year now what do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old behold God says I'm doing a new thing now it shall spring forth at the 30 year now what forgetting those things that are behind you and reaching to one the thing that are before you press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus after 30 years now what stir up the gift I said stir up the gift that's within you and watch God empower you to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is at work within you stir the gift that's in you at the 30 year now what I'll tell you what keep believing keep dreaming keep moving keep increasing keep expanding tell the Lord to enlarge my territory tell the Lord to break me out on the right hand and break me out on the left hand tell the Lord whatever you want to do go ahead God I'm willing and I'm ready for you to do whatever you want to do stir it up I said stir it up and while you stir it up somebody I said somebody will catch a hold of the fire that's on the inside of you while you stir it up the fire that's on the inside will transfer unto those that are walking along with you in ministry stir up the gift that's on the inside and while you're stirring it up just go ahead and praise God with everything that's within you praise him in the sanctuary praise him coming in and going out praise him in the midst of your struggles praise him in the midst of your trials praise him no matter what it looks like because God is going to bring you to your expected end I don't know how you feel about it but I'm gonna stir up the gift that's within me I'm going to fan the flame of the fire that's on the inside Mac after 30 years keep on laying your hand on the sick and they shall recover keep on speaking the word prophetically and God will bring it to pass keep on standing strong in the ministry and God will back up every word that comes out of your mouth yes Lord stir it up stir it up I dare you to stir it up stir it up and watch God bless you and deliver you stir it up yes sir 
watch God lift this house up to dimensions that you never imagined. Stir it up. Stir it up. In Jesus' name, stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to thank you right now for the word. I want to thank you for this man of God, Bishop Sir Walter Mack, in whom you hath anointed and is leading your people prophetically in this season. I pray now, Father, that you will continue to anoint him afresh and that you would give him the energy and the strength to do all that you've called him to do. Bless his wife, strengthen her as she stands along with him in the ministry. Grant unto her her heart's desires. Thank you for his entire family. Cover them in your blood. I thank you even today for the Union Baptist Church, a church that's doing great things for you. Bless this church. I pray that there be no lack here, no shortages. I decree and I declare even now overflow comes to this house in every area of ministry. And Lord, we don't have to wait until we see it before we praise you, but we'll praise you right now because we know that it's already done now lord as he turns the page and begins this next phase of ministry i pray oh god that you would make every crooked path straight and that you would place upon him an anointing of ease hallelujah where everything that his hands touch you turn it into good. It is in the name of Jesus we decree and we declare it so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. the way
Greetings on behalf of the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. We come to wish you a happy 30th pastoral anniversary. God has blessed you in such a powerful and unique way, and I am excited to be with you on the journey. On behalf of the General Baptist Convention, but also on behalf of the Lynch family, our families have been close across the years. Our fathers were best friends for many years. It is with joy that I join others to give you our prayers and well wishes. God bless you. May heaven keep you. You know I love you, my brother, and God give you strength and peace for the journey. Amen. It is my wonderful privilege to be able to share with Bishop Sir Walter Mack all the way from Charm City, Baltimore, Maryland, USA on this signal and significant 30th pastoral anniversary day. I'm Pastor Harold A. Carter Jr. of the New Shiloh Baptist Church extending to you, Bishop, all of the blessings and favor of God. I praise the Lord that you are a part of this servant of God's life, friend, colleague, associate, brother, and whatever you wanna go on to add to that in the realm of positivity. I thank God that you are an eclectic spirit, a creative spirit, a genius in so many ways. And I just am happy again to know you and to claim you as a part of my existence, a part of my world. As you well know, our relationship goes back and so we can throw in big time friendship all the more because of your fondness and appreciation for my parents. In fact, they may as well have been indeed in some way from a surrogate sense, your parents as well, even though we honor the life and legacy and love and longevity of your sainted mother, even in this moment. But I certainly praise God for my own parents, Dr. Harold A. Carter and Dr. Weptonoma Carter for bosoming you. And through them all the more, I came to appreciate who you are and to claim you as a brother, amen, a brother in Christ. Thank God that I have this opportunity to celebrate with you. And certainly with the strength of my own wife and her love to you and to Lady Kim, we extend to you and the Union Baptist family all of the blessings of God. I thank the Lord for allowing us to travel together as a part of the Global United Fellowship across these years with the presiding prelate, Bishop Neil C. Ellis, and I thank God that our roots go all the way back to United Theological Seminary, where you still serve and where I served for some 16 years, as well as both of us received our doctorate in ministries from. It's so ironic that in the spirit of mentorship at this juncture, you are now mentoring our oldest son, soon to be prayerfully, the Reverend Dr. Dr. Daniel Carter. And so God has so many ways of pulling things together. In fact, I just claim Paul's message in the eighth chapter of Romans that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Anybody love the Lord and who have been called according to his purposes. I know that you love the Lord. I love the Lord and I rejoice with you this special day. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Happy anniversary. May Jesus Christ be praised. Hello, Bishop Matt. Happy anniversary. On behalf of Ignite Christian Fellowship, we'd like to say, well, well done, done, great, great job. job, congratulations. Bishop Sir Walter Mack, my God, my brother, listen, we are so blessed to greet you for 30 years of effective and efficient ministry. Man, Greater Church, we love you so very much, you and um, Lady Kim, for all that you all do. And 
But for you, sir, to be my covenant brother, my covenant friend, I am so excited about what the Lord is doing in your life, and I congratulate you. Co-pastor and I really appreciate you again so very much. Thank you for being there for us as we have went through transition. You've been one of those who've been true to us, and we love you for it. I thank God again for the ministries that the um, Lord has blessed you to lead at the Union Baptist Church, and most of all, what you are doing across this nation. Man to God, you deserve everything that the Union Baptist Church would do for you as you celebrate 30 years of ministry. And I thank God long will be your days on the earth, and God will bless you even more as you continue to carry out the assignment on your life. We love you, man of God. Congratulations again. Amen. To Sir Walter Lee Mack Jr., congratulations on 30 years in the ministry. I'd like to commend, first of all, your parents for laying the foundation for ministry, and secondly, you for following that formula, that path that uh, they set. Consequently, God has given you the conceptualization of 21st century ministry when you first began. Your ministry has been innovative, it has been inspirational, and most of all, you've set the course that so many people are following now. But because of the vision that God gave you 30 years ago, a lot of those visionary tactics that he spoke to you about are now coming to fruition. And you, my friend and my brother, are indeed an example for the world to follow. So I just say congratulations. Cheryl and I are so proud of you. And as you and Kim move forward into the next, whatever that may be, we know that God has already set the pattern, the course is set. Move on with God's speed and with God's blessing, my friend and my brother. God bless you. Hello. First of all, we want to thank you so much for your generous support so that we can continue to operate in excellence. The following are ways to give tithes and offerings using technology. Use the Push Pay app or go to Giving Page on the Union Baptist website. Use the Cash app, which is dollar sign UBC 1200 trade. Use the Givelify app, Union Baptist Church, Winston-Salem. For Rise Up Giving, please use the designated cash app. Dollar sign, Union Baptist, Rise Up. If you don't use technology for giving, you may bring your tithes, offering, and Rise Up campaign payments on Sundays from 10 a.m. till noon. Envelopes will be available. Or you can mail checks only. No cash. Only checks to 1200 North Trade Street, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27101. Stay engaged. Join us for our weekly Zoom Connect programs. Each day, there is a way for you to engage with your Union Baptist Church family. Mondays, join Coffee and Connect Bible Study. Tuesdays, it's Men's and Women's Fellowship. Connect with your brothers and sisters for a topical discussion on relevant issues. Wednesdays, it's all about the youth, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Special Zoom sessions for nursery through high school. Thursdays, it's Breaking Bread with Bishop Mack, a Bible study addressing timely challenges from a biblical perspective. Thursdays at 8.30 p.m., it's Kaya, the networking and empowerment session for all young adults and young professionals. Fridays, get moving with Lady Kim on Fitness Friday. The exercise video can be viewed on the Union Baptist website or Facebook page any time of the day beginning at 6.30 a.m. On the weekends, connect with Saturday Phone Line Worship. Saturday, C2C Remix Motivational Services. Saturday Connect Worship Services, Sunday School Phone Line, Sunday Worship Services Phone Line, and Online. Don't forget to call in each Saturday for our church chat with Bishop at 7 p.m. These calls are important for information about the ministry. Please visit the website for dates, times, and Zoom ID numbers for all these Connect services. And don't forget to stay safe, wash those hands frequently, avoid large crowds over the size of 10, cover coughs and sneezes, Stay at home when you're sick. Don't hoard the food. The supply chain is fine right now. Have a blessed week.